Today's show is brought to you by Audible.com. You can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial as well for those of you that listen to What's the Score. Go to audibletrial.com slash WTS Sports Quiz. You will have access to over 180,000 titles to choose from on your iPhone, Kindle, Android, or MP3 player. That's audibletrial.com slash WTS Sports Quiz. Broadcasting from the Attention Era Media Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe, the man who once tried trick-or-treating at Roger Goodell's house. Unfortunately, Goodell wasn't participating. He'd purchased airheads, and they'd somehow all deflated by the time he was supposed to give them out. And now, here's a man who's always a treat to work with, the host of What's the Score, Baxter Colbert. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. A very happy Halloween to you. We hope the month of October has treated you well. It's almost gone. My gosh, it's, it's amazing how fast the month of October flies by. Baby C will be here in the next couple of weeks as well. I'm still waiting for your official name, too, Josh, that you think we should name my son as well. Have you thought any more about it? You've had two oh, months to I'm, think oh, about I'm this. Oh, I'm thinking about it. I'll, I'll let you know, so okay. don't worry. still got a couple of weeks. We do want to remind all of you, of course, that you can go and check out our website, WTSportsquiz.com, on our Facebook and Twitter pages as well to sign up to be a contestant on our fantastic show. You can also find the show on demand on Spreaker.com and the Sports Podcasting Network. All right, let's meet our panelists this week. First up, he is a member of the Illinois Soccer Hall of Fame. He's the founding general manager of the Chicago Fire, and now he's the CEO of the Chicago NASL. It is Peter Welch. Hi, Peter. How are you, sir? Fantastic. Great to be here, Baxter. Well, Thanks for having me. We are thrilled to have you here. Next up, he is a former Packer beat writer for 540 ESPN, a semi-retired pro wrestler, a fantasy football guru, and the co-host of the Kilbasa King Sports Extravaganza podcast. It's Scott Wisniewski. My pleasure to be here again as well. Thank you. And finally, he's a sports enthusiast, videographer, and graduate of the Marquette University. It is Michael Biermeister. Game day. Love it. Bring it. Love it. Love it. Welcome to the show panel. Great to have all of you back as well. Mr. Wilt, it's been a long time since you've been on the show. What have you been doing with your life? Studying for today. Studying for today. You've had months and months of preparation, and I'm sure I'm, I'm you tired are. of finishing third. Today's the day. Today's the day. You've got I me mean, the panelists you've got around you. You're, you're, you're uh, it's not the day. Just a reminder for you panelists as well, you will be answering questions about Halloween as a whole. Not Halloween sports trivia, just mm. Halloween as a whole. So keep that in your mind as well. It's time to get this show on the road with our first contestant game. Joining us in the studio to play Dictionary Definitions is Tyler Sopko. Welcome to the show, Tyler. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for having me. All right, Tyler. Um, with a little help from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, we found five terms that sound like Halloween-related objects, though we're actually, of course, going to be referring to the sports definitions of these words. We'll give you the definition, and you must correctly tell us the word that we're looking for. Okay. Correctly answer at least three questions, and you'll win a What's the Score prize. If you get stuck, you can ask one panelist for a hint, but on only one question. So make sure you choose wisely. Are you ready to play? Let's do this. All right, here we go. A usually wooden implement used for hitting the ball in various games like cricket or baseball. That would be a bat. Yes, that is correct. (laughs) This object is a small sled that's ridden in a prone position and used especially in competition. It's also the name of the competition itself. Hockey puck. No, no, that is incorrect, unfortunately. We're looking for the skeleton, the skeleton uh, sled. or Is it a sled, technically? I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. It's the Olympic sport. I, I think it's, that. it's, it's like sled. a sled. It's a type kind of, of sled. A, kind of a sled. Sure. All right, here is your next one. A form of rowing, the process of an oar used at the stern of a boat to propel it forward, With a crosswise motion. Also, this doesn't have anything to do with the skeleton, but it kind of sounds like it would based off of the word itself. You do have a hint as well if you'd like to use your hint. Can I use the hint? Yes, of course. Would you like to talk to Scott, Peter, or Michael for a hint? How about Scott? All right, Scott, (laughs) how can you help him out? Okay, so the hint I could best give you would be it would be the bone structure inside your head. That would be the root word of this. So what would be the bone inside your head? Mm, the bone inside your head, yes. The skull. Okay. okay. Now you this. <coughs> so <laughs> you're cl- you've got you've got half the word. You just got to <coughs> tack on something at the end. 
don't even know what that's called. I the feel suffix. So bad. Right? The suffix. What, yeah. what is, is the action? What is the action? Yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw a hail mary. The okay. skull rope. I <sighs> no, no. Unfortunately, <laughs> sculling technically is, is yes. the full the full thing. All right, no problem. That was here. a tough one. It was. It really yeah, was. Yeah, a tough it is. One. Who writes these games? Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, <laughs> here <laughs> is the uh, here's the next one for you. Strong and tightly woven material used in strips to catch or hold things. In sports, the term is best known as part of a baseball glove. Some spiders might also use this as well. Mm -hmm. The webbing. Yes, that is correct. (laughs) All right, here is your final one. In football, this is a place on the field found near the goal line and the out-of-bounce line where a punter would love to place his punt. This also is a term... It sounds like it would be a nice place for a vampire to feel cozy as well. Traditionally for a punter, it's a, not a very big area, maybe about <coughs> five yards or so, right by the goal line and the out-of-bounce area. And also a place that it sounds like would be comfortable for a vampire to sleep in. Uh, I... I just can't think of the term right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's two words. We can give you that. So, I mean, you can kind of dissect it in a couple of different ways. I mean, so vampires and other people sleep in these for a long time. They usually don't wake up either. <laughs> They're down there. <laughs> um, any sort of a guess at all for us? I can't think of anything. No? no? Okay. I, no problem. It was Coffin Corner is what we were officially... Looking for. Game Master Shabby, how did Tyler do on our quiz? Tyler got two out of five correct. Unfortunately, not a winner today. Ah, well, we appreciate you playing, Tyler. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Looks like we're heading to our first break now, but when we come back, our panelists will have their first crack at showcasing their knowledge of the ghost wonderful time of the year. Don't go away. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. So you're sitting at home probably right now thinking, hey, you know what? What's the score? Sounds like a really fun show. I'm really enjoying my time listening. But you know what you're not doing? You're not signing up to be a contestant, and we want you to do that. Go to our website, WTSSportsQuiz.com, and click on the contact form or fill out the contestant form on the front page of the website. Or go visit us on Facebook, What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, or on Twitter, at WTS Sports Quiz, and click on one of the social media posts that have Be a Contestant. You could win a great prize. You get to talk to Game Master Shivey. You get to talk to me. You just get to have sports news quiz fun at the highest level. It seems like a pretty obvious thing, so why are you still listening? Go. Go do that right now. Go be a contestant on What's the Score. We need you. But seriously, though, thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe. I spy there with my little fly our three panelists for the week. (laughs) What the heck was that? I don't know. Golly. I wrote it this morning. Sure you did. Anyway, it's Peter Wilt, Scott Wisniewski, and Michael Biermeister. And now, here's your host at the Attention Era Media Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Baxter Colburn. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. We've had a thrilling show so far. I'm not as good at the puns as you are. <laughs> anyway, time now for our panelists to showcase their knowledge about the holiday that so many people are just, are just dying to celebrate, Halloween. Peter, we'll start with you. What famous magician from our very own state of Wisconsin, from the city of Appleton, died on Halloween? Is it A, Harry Houdini, B, Orson Welles, or C, David Copperfield? No, that would be uh, uh, Eric Weiss. Uh, from Appleton, he was punched in the gut uh, unexpectedly. Uh, it was one of those deals where he used to tell people from the audience, I can take any punch at all. And so someone hit him, but he wasn't expecting it. And oh. usually he has to get his abdomen prepared for it. And it burst an ulcer inside of him, and it led to his death. So uh, Eric Weiss, also known as Harry Houdini. There you go. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> 
Harry Houdini, a very intriguing gentleman, to say the least. Scott, the next one's for you. Halloween has now become the second largest commercial holiday in the United States. How much is this industry worth? A, $50 million, B, $6 billion, or C, $1 million? Six billion dollars. Yeah, that is correct. Yes. And five billion of that is spent on Harley Quinn costumes. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody really? Did anybody really believe? Especially, I mean, you guys have been around for a little bit longer than Josh and I have, except for you, of course, Michael. But when you were younger, did you think this industry would be worth six no, billion dollars? Absolutely like, not. It, and it's it, so weird. And it really turned, I think, when I my, like right out when I got out of college about twenty years ago, because it was really just a kids' holiday, and then all of a sudden the bars made a killing, and it just became a huge industry. I'm surprised too. I hit my mind Money on Arbor Day, and <laughs> <laughs> you bought, you, you purchased wrong, I guess. In Arbor Day, do you still celebrate Arbor Day though? I do, trees, and, and it's a very lonely celebration. <laughs> but uh, yeah. not a six billion dollar industry. Not though, quite yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> One day, I like it. The termination of Peter Wilt. All right, Michael. Question for you: Clowns, as many people know, are wonderful. Believe it or oh, not, uh, compete for uh, for who can be the best at what they do. Actually, uh, however, there are actually classes of clowns out there in the world. How many clown classes are there? Are there 18, 7, or 4 clown classes? Hmm. Can you read those back to me really quick? Yes. Thanks. 18, 7, or 4 clown classes around the great world. I'm going to go with 18. No, that is incorrect, actually. Four. There are four clown classes. I do not have them in front of me, unfortunately. See, that's a confusing question. When you initially read it, I thought you were talking in terms of clown college. Ah, like clowning 101? Or <laughs> right. How, how many to do? scare a child in a cornfield or <laughs> things like that? Or? Correct. But apparently there's different categories. Yes. Maybe, what you're like, yes. To, so well, is one of those different. categories now the clowns that are like kind of hiding out in woods and yes, <laughs> interrupting exactly. our schools and those sorts of things? That. Of a, it was really crazy how that all was taking place a couple weeks. Yeah, ago, yeah. People were freaking out about all these darn clowns. By the way, I think I would be remiss if I didn't congratulate everybody because this is the 40th edition of this show. Yes, it and is. this show already, even though it's not done yet, is greater than former Milwaukee Brewer pitcher Ricky Bonez and Ben <laughs> McDonald, who both wore number 40. <laughs> so we've already surpassed them. So Thank you, I think. I think Is that a compliment? It's, it's not over yet. I was going to say, we've only gotten through like you know two-ninths of the show, basically. But either way, we, we appreciate that. Thank you. Well, uh, we're heading to a break. But when we come back, our second contestant will play another one of our new games. Don't go away. This is What's the Score, the Sports News Quiz. What's the score would like to take this time to thank one of our partners, Vavil USA, the international online sports newspaper for their support. Head over to Vavil.com slash EN dash US today as they provide professional reporting on all major sports in the USA. Follow them on Twitter at Vavil underscore USA and go like their Facebook page for prime access to the ultimate source for sports coverage on the web. We here at What's the Score are proud to partner with a terrific organization like Vavil USA. Well, hey, everybody, this is Baxter. I just want to take a quick minute to point something out. We've been on the air for almost a year. It's amazing how long this show has actually been going on with all the other stuff that we have going on in our lives. But Game Master Shabby and I have worked really hard, and we are thrilled to continue to be on the air. But there's one thing that we haven't done a lot of so far. We haven't done a lot of live shows. So if you're sitting at home right now thinking to yourself, you know, I really would like a great sports news trivia quiz show to come and do a live event at my church, at my fair, at my restaurant, at whatever, why not contact us? We'd love to come out and do it. Send us an email, wtsportsquiz at gmail.com, or visit the contact form on our website, wtsportsquiz.com. We'd love to chat with you and figure out if we can't come and do some crazy sports news trivia fun with you. All right, enough of this. Let's get back to the action. Game Master Shiby, take it away. Hello all and welcome back to the Attention Era Media Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is What's the Score, the Sports News Quiz. 
I'm Josh Scheibe, your Game Master. We have a spooktacular panel here for you. Mm -hmm. It's Scott Wisniewski, Michael Biermeister, and Peter Wiltz, and they'll have the opportunity to show their prowess in just a little bit. Before that, though, here's the host of What's the Score, Baxter Colburn. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. We have had a great show so far. It's our Halloween-themed episode. We want to remind all of you, of course, that we have our Name 5 Panelist Showdown Coming up later in the show, Josh, you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm What's fine. What's going on? <laughs> well, you, you know, seem, you, you seem distraught, if you'd, distracted. Uh, uh, yeah, the clown nose is uh, throwing me off a little it's bit very there. Fitting. I, <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> it I don't know. Anyway, we are thrilled though to move along with the show. We do have our name five panelist showdown, of course, coming up as well at the end of the show. Playing our next game is Sarah Freed. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sarah. How are we doing today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, fantastic. We are thrilled to have you on the show this week. Um, as you as you know, the Halloween time of year uh, sometimes prompts nicknames for certain athletes. Uh, we have questions for you with a halloween -y, you know, twist, basically. Um, but we don't want to, of course, trick you too much. So we've thrown in a treat in the form of an extra clue as we give you the description of these nicknames. Correctly answer at okay. least three questions, and you'll win a What's the Score prize. If you get stuck, you can ask one panelist for a hint, but on only one question, so choose wisely. Are you ready to play? Okay, I'm ready. All right, here is your first one. The legendary St. Louis Cardinals shortstop Ozzie Smith was given this magical nickname because of his defensive brilliance, and with the Harry Potter series being so popular, there's more than a few kids that will be dressing up as this for Halloween. Uh, Wizard of Oz. I gave Master Shivey. That's, that's a, a really good answer. answer. That's a very good answer. <laughs> it's, it's, it's she almost gave us too much though. <laughs> she got. I I say she okay, got. Okay, we're looking there. for yeah. wizard as a whole, not yeah. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we'll give it to her. There we go. All right. Here is your next one, Sarah. You may know this as the nickname of basketball players Jerry Sloan and John Sally. If not, perhaps knowing that this is the mascot for the University of Richmond might help. It's also a movie is it series. Spider. Yeah, that is correct. Spider, nicely done. All right, here is your next one. Jeffrey Adder was a utility infielder for the Baltimore Orioles back in the 1960s. Uh, his nickname was that of a cartoon character who was showcased in a live-action feature film starring Bill Pullman and Christina Ricci. What was Adler's nickname? Oh, um. You do have one hint as well, Sarah, if you'd like to use your hint. Can I, can I ask the panelists? Absolutely. Would you like to talk to Scott, Peter, or Michael for your hint? Uh, Scott. All right, Scott. How can you help out Sarah? Okay. Um, let's see. This is a – this character we're looking for was a friendly spirit. Oh. Uh, Casper. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Casper the Friendly Ghost. Not exactly sure why he got the name specifically, but a very – Interesting one, nonetheless. All right, here is your next one. This retired baseball player, whose first name is actually Candido, spent most of his 15-year career playing with the Dodgers and Giants, and he has a sweet nickname that's definitely a treat. Oh, um... I will say this. It is related to his first name. So his first name is Candido, and his nickname... Is it Candy? Yes, yep, that is correct. <laughs> Nicely done. All right, here is your final question. Thomas Weekly is a golfer on the PGA Tour who has a very ghostly nickname and also an NFL wide receiver and a couple other basketball players as well. Uh, we hope this question does not scare you. It's also the name of one of my two cats as well, for those of you that follow my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure everybody does. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what's the nickname that we're looking for, Sarah? Can you repeat that? Yes, I'd be happy to. So Thomas Weekly is a golfer on the PGA Tour who has this ghostly nickname, as we hope the nickname does not scare you, though. I'm going to go with Boo. I don't know. Yeah, that's correct. Nicely done. Oh. <laughs> Game Master Shabby, how did Sarah do in our game? Sarah got five out of five correct. Wow. A perfect score. Nice. She's a winner. Nice, Sarah. Congratulations. Thank you so much for playing. We really appreciate it. Panel, another couple of questions for you. Scott, we'll start with you. Halloween, of course, had to start somewhere. Where did it start? Is it A, Denmark, B, Ireland, or C, USA? The USA. Hmm. America. I don't know. However you want to call it. 
I'm going to say Ireland. Yeah, that is correct. Leave it to the Irish to get drunk and uh, come up with a holiday. <laughs> I honestly had no idea. And ironically, St. Patrick's Day was started in the U.S. <laughs> People like yeah, to at least things. popularized. Popularized, isn't it? Same like Saint Patrick himself and all. I don't, uh, either way, Michael, the next one's for you. What Hispanic festival begins on Halloween and ends on November second? Is it A. Dia de los Muertos, B. Cinco de Mayo, or C. The Festival of Light? A. Uh, say it. <laughs> <laughs> you only get the point of it. My Dia de los Muertos. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> when Peter Wilt calls you out on the air. It's like, <laughs> it's like all right. Uh, <laughs> I got to prove it. All right, Peter, question for you. Uh, how do you indicate to children and adults who didn't get the memo that this was for kids um, that your house is actually open for tricks or treats? Is it A, your front lights are on, B, you have decorations on the lawn to scare your neighbors, or C, creepy music is playing from your house? Well, I pre-smashed my pumpkins so ah, that no one smart. can do it to me. <laughs> smart but, play. Uh, uh, I don't think that's the indicator. It is the porch light. Yes, that is correct. Know. Do any of you give out candy to children in a legal sense? I give out, um, <laughs> well, in, in, in past years I've been known, and the parents on, aren't real thrilled with this, but I give out uh, candy cigarettes, which, which <laughs> the kids like, you know. And, uh, but this okay. year I'm, I'm switching uh, to Tic Tacs. To Tic Tacs, yes, okay. This show brought Donald to you by Tic Tacs. Yes, you know, <laughs> the Donald, yes. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, Scott, do you do anything? I, I do, but I think as a kid the worst people to trick or treat uh, – at were the people who'd give you like nickels and pennies. Like I want candy. It's like, I don't. I, don't I didn't. You're not a bank. Yeah. I right. want. I want. You know, candy because no, you can't suck. Those on are a the nickel. people that forgot to shop. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> just, just give them a nickel. It's their kids. They'll buy a gumball. It's like no. They'd be better off not answering the door. Exactly, <laughs> Michael. You're still young enough. I mean, yeah. I don't know. You're probably not giving candy um, yet. No, I mean nobody really trick or treats around Marquette. So fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Well, it's time for another break, but before we do, I want to note that Scott gets another point for that successful hint in our last game. Holy cow. Storming ahead. And we're heading into our break now, but don't worry. We'll be right back, and we'll ax our panelists some more questions about Halloween. Don't go away. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. Hey guys, this is Baxter. I want to take a quick minute to let you know that we've changed a couple of things here at What's the Score. The show will no longer be broadcast live on Sunday afternoon or evenings anymore. Instead, you can find the show every Monday morning on demand right at your fingertips at 8 a.m. Central Time. Go and download it on iTunes, visit us on Spreaker.com, or go to our website, WTSSportsQuiz.com, to get the most recent show and past shows as well the best way to keep in touch with everything that What's the Score is doing. So once again, no more live shows, but go and download it. iTunes, Spreaker.com, and What's the Score? WTSSportsQuiz.com. James Corsmo of TitletownSoundOff.com here with the man they call Bobbo. Howdy. And we want to tell you a bit about our podcast, Titletown Sound. We're fans of the Green Bay Packers, as I'm sure many of you are. And we know there are plenty of opinions out there, but we think we give you some unique takes that vary between the level-headed and sensible, all the way to the entertainingly absurd. That's our specialty, the entertainingly absurd. Sure is. We've got other hosts to talk sensible-like. So the website is Titletown Sound Off, and the podcast is Titletown Sound? That's right. So the podcast just leaves off the off? Yes. So fans of the Packers should go in to TitletownSoundOff.com to get into the podcast. Exactly. That's a lot of prepositions. Sure is, James. It sure is. Now back to two of my favorite prepositions on the interwebs, Baxter and Josh. Those are nouns. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz, and thanks for listening in. We're broadcasting from the Attention Era Media Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm your game master, Josh Scheibe, and we're playing this week with Michael Biermeister, Peter Wilt, and Scott Wisniewski. And here, once again, is your host of What's the Score? 
Baxter Coleman. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. We've had a great show so far. It's our Halloween episode, our 40th show as well. It's a great day to be alive as well. Time now, of course, for our panelists to answer our final batch of questions about the great holiday of Halloween. Michael, the first one's for you. Many people fear Halloween, the spooks, the scares. What would this fear be called? A, Halloweenia, B, Samhanophobia, or B, Clownophobia? Um, can you repeat the first two? Sure. Halloweenia and Samhanophobia. I'm going to go with the, the second one. <laughs> Yeah, you can't. Yeah, right. can't, can't, can't repeated to call you out. Like, say it. I'm going say after it. you. I don't want to say it. Samhanophobia. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Peter, question for you, of course. Um, the first known clown appeared almost 3,000 years ago as a court jester in what part of the world? Was it A, Egypt, B, Italy, or C, Portugal? Boy, a court jester. I think, you know, for, by the way, if you're ever approached by a gang of clowns, they're attacking you. You should go for the juggler. <laughs> right at the juggler. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The, the, the I'm proud of you, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. There's one. There's one. <laughs> it's a small group. Uh, the, so the options again are, are Portugal, Portugal, Italy, and Egypt. Three thousand years. Three thousand years ago. You know, Egypt being the. Um, I wonder if clowns were around when Jesus was around. Like, did Jesus did, were, were clowns saved? Did they get into heaven? I'm assuming so. Anyway, side note. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> the apostles clowns. Yeah, maybe well, yeah, Simon Peter, over. a little clowny there. I don't even know. Anyway, well, I, I think Egypt being the kind of the, the cradle of civilization would have been the first to come up with a, a jester and a clown. Mm. So I'm going with Egypt. Yeah, you're right about that. That is correct. <laughs> Egypt. Did they have the little like masks on and everything, like you know, like the pharaohs did? Is there like a pharaoh like if you if buried with clown things? Like you never know. Like is that why they, we yeah. can't find King Tut's tomb? Is because he was actually a clown? Like I think they did find it. Was it Tut? And who, uh, was it, <laughs> to talk about, who was it? They not found. I thought there was somebody that hasn't been found. I don't know. I'm looking at you, Josh. You need to know everything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought there was some notable. Anyway, let's go. Let's move <laughs> along here. I guess. All right, Scott. The last one's for you. Being a clown comes with rules. Which of the following below is one of the rules for professional clowns? Is it A, wear shoes that are at least a men's 13, B, never dye your own hair, or C, provide good, clean, quality entertainment? Well, though they don't seem to abide by that rule, I'm going to say C. Yeah, that's correct. Provide good, clean, quality entertainment. Yeah. Sideshow Bob, um, <laughs> Bobcat <laughs> Goldthwait movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, what was that? Patches, the clown, was it? I, I no, forget. No, but I know which. That's the Robin about. Williams one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that was... Um, Patch Adams? Patch Adams. Yeah. That's but what I, it was. There you go. Bobcat was dr- uh, the drunk clown in that movie. Yeah, he <laughs> did not abide by that. No, rule. not at all. By the way, the, these scores are so much closer than Super Bowl Forty, which Pittsburgh beat Seattle 21-10. <laughs> to 10, And, of course, this being a 40th show... Just okay. plugging it. I love it. Yeah, it is our 40th episode. My God. Are you giving him points to do this? As I, well? I'm you don't have to. I'm, I'm just seriously saying. considering it. The tiebreaker. A tiebreaker, yeah. How many compliments can you points loop into Scott. 40? <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, it's time for me to break up the fun once again. But when we come back, our final contestant will play another one of our new games. Don't go away. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. Hey guys, this is Baxter Colburn. Just want to take a quick minute to remind all of you to go check us out on social media. You can go find us on Facebook by searching for What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. And while you're on our Facebook page, why not invite some of your friends to come like our Facebook page as well? You can go and check out all the great recordings that we do, behind-the-scenes pictures. You can see the different videos we do with a lot of our panelists as well. And just get to know What's the Score? A little bit better as well. Also, go check us out on Twitter, at WTS Sports Quiz, and at WTS Sports Quiz on Instagram as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the three most powerful things on the social media spectrum right now and what's the score is on all of them. Go and check us out today. Welcome back everyone. This is What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. I'm Josh Scheibe, your Game Master. 
Our Name 5 panelist showdown is coming up, but first we have a new game called Supernatural Superstitions. Here to get the game going is your host at the Attention Era Media Studios here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's Baxter Colburn. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. A reminder to go check out our show by going to our website, WTSSportsQuiz.com. You can find past episodes and see who tops our panelist leaderboard as well. It's time now to welcome in our last contestant. Playing our final game is Vanya Kepke. Welcome to the show, Vanya. Hey, Baxter. Thanks for having me on today. Absolutely, Vanya. We are thrilled to have you on. Uh, as you know, Vanya, the sports world is full of all kinds of crazy sports superstitions, how people hold their bat, warm up for the games, eat or not eat. The list kind of goes on and on. In this game, which we're calling Supernatural Superstitions, we'll give you five questions about supernatural sports happenings. Answer at least three correctly, and you'll win a What's the Score prize. If you need help, you can ask one panelist for a hint on only one question, so make sure you choose wisely. Are you ready to play? Sounds like a plan. All right, here's your first one. Back in 2013 during the Super Bowl, many folks will remember that the lights of the Superdome just stopped working for 30 minutes. It prompted an epic comeback. It was one of the most exciting finishes in Super Bowl history. Who were the two teams that were playing? Was it A, the Broncos and Vikings, B, the Jaguars and the Browns, or C, the 49ers and the Ravens? C, 49ers and the Ravens. Yeah, that is correct. Nicely done. Colin Kaepernick and company not able to, to pull the, the comeback off as the Harbaugh Bowl was going to the Ravens. <laughs> All right, here is your next one. In 2002, rumors swirled, provoking people's feelings once again that the NBA was rigged. Which team got the benefit of generous officiating? Was it A, the Los Angeles Lakers, B, the Dallas Mavericks, or C, the Sacramento Kings? A. Yeah, that is correct. The Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> Nicely done. Moving on, here's your third question. In 2015, one of the biggest conspiracy theories in modern football overinflated the sports pundits and gave people the audacity to call out the greatness of a lot of teams, especially one in particular. Which theory are we speaking of? Is it A, Deflategate, B, Prince Fielder was actually a vegan, or C, Skip Bayless was taking steroids? Uh, I'll go to Deflategate. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> awesome. I mean, does anybody really think Prince Fielder's a vegan? I mean, I, I don't think so. You never know. You know? Hey, cheese... It yeah, puts on the pounds. It really does. It goes all right to the hips, I guess. All right, here is your next Well, I guess that would be vegetarian. That wouldn't really be vegan. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah that doesn't qualify. That doesn't quite work for it. Okay, here's your next one. In 1985, rumors swirled about the NBA rigging the draft. So which team would get Patrick Ewing as the number one overall pick? Was it A, the Indiana Pacers, B, the Seattle Supersonics, or C, the New York Knicks? I believe it's the New York Knicks. Yes, that is correct. Nicely done. Doing have a very nice long career there. All right. By the way, that uh, that rumor was that the envelope was actually frozen, the one that had the Knicks name in oh. it, so that when he reached in, he knew that he was grabbing. The I've Knicks. heard that done for other things. I think I read that in a book one time too. It's the like ping pong <laughs> balls for uh, European championships are often that's uh, put many... in the refrigerator. Why though? Like, I mean, that's probably how Qatar got the the World Cup. But, you know, that's another topic. Anyway, oh. all right. Here is yeah. your your final one. He's like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> all right. Here's your last question. In 2008, this conspiracy theory is and was the swimmer's touch pad that was too sensitive, giving this swimmer the win over Milorad Kavik in a remarkable comeback. What swimmer was that person capable of the comeback? Was it A. Michael Phelps, B. Ryan Lochte, or C. Mitchell Vomhoff? <laughs> You said 2008? 2008. Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, or Mitchell Vomhoff? I'm going to go with Michael Phelps. Yes, that is correct. Awesome. Michael Phelps. Game Master Shibe, how did Vanya do on our game? Vanya got five out of five correct. A perfect score. He's a winner. Hey, congratulations, Vanya. Thank you so much for playing, sir. The moment you've all been waiting for is almost here. Stick around and listen to our panelists duke it out on the Name 5 Panelist Showdown coming up right after the break. Don't go away. You're listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. Hello all, I'm Josh Scheibe, your Game Master here at What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. Thanks for listening in. 
I may not know much about sports, but what I do know about are our social media pages. Check us out on Facebook at What's the Score or Twitter and Instagram at, at WTS Sports Quiz. Thanks very much for listening. Hey, everybody, just want to take a quick minute to remind you to go and check out our website, WTSSportsQuiz.com. It has all the latest information about WTS and everything that's going on. Find out more information about Game Master Shibe. Check out the blog section to see what our latest articles are. Or even go and check out our panelist leaderboard, our archive, and all the numerous other things that you can find by visiting us at WTS Sports Quiz. And if you want to be a contestant, why not fill out our contact form or our contestant form and let us know if you want to be a part of our terrific show today. Thanks so much for listening, and let's get back to the action. Hello, and welcome back. Thanks for listening to What's the Score? The Sports News Quiz. I'm your game master, Josh Shady. Our panelists have been warming up their final, and I do mean final, showdown. Oh. While they get ready, here's your host at the Attention Era Media Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Baxter Colbert. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hi, thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody. I'm assuming that's where you were going with that. No, it wasn't, actually. Oh, where were you uh, going? Final countdown. What else are you going to watch? Final what? showdown. Showdown, final. countdown. Final. Like Final. Oh. Terminal. <laughs> Going to the coffin corner, Baxter. Oh, so you uh, should have said that. Uh, well, I was thinking Final mm, Countdown. Well, tomorrow is Halloween. So. It is. Yeah. It is. Game Master Shabby, do you have your costume picked up for Halloween yet? I do. I'm not telling you what it is, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. No, Why? okay. I, uh, well, remember what I told you uh, what was it, a few few weeks back that yeah. I was going to go as the guy from The Purge? Oh, Good, good. I'm not doing that. Friendly, <laughs> kid friendly. The, the, the parents would be like, "That guy, go buy yeah. him." Yeah. <laughs> good. Well, so exciting. <laughs> we are so excited to have you back here as our 40th show continues to roll along. Uh, we do want to, of course, remind you that you can check out the show on demand by going to iTunes and Spreaker.com and the Sports Podcasting Network as well. Game Master Shabby. With all that being said, what time is it, sir? It's time for the Name Five Panelist Showdown. <laughs> Our panelists will be given four topics in which they will have ten seconds to name five people, teams, places, or things related to the sports world. Each panelist will have the same category. However, they cannot repeat answers. One point is awarded for each correct answer. Game Master Shivey, can you give us the scores, please? I can. Michael is in third with two points, Peter's in second with three, and Scott's in the lead with four points. Ooh, all right. So, Michael, you will be leading us off, sir. Ten seconds in round number one to name five pieces of sports equipment. Okay? Okay. Ten seconds and begin. Helmet, shoulder pad, um, jersey, uh, gloves, and cleats. There you go. He got five. Nicely done. We clap for the fivers on the show. Well done, sir. Well done. Peter, over to you. Ten seconds and begin, sir. Uh, Hockey stick, ice skates, steering wheel for uh, a race car, and... uh, um, batting helmet. Well, see, see, Michael said helmet. Uh, do you classify all helmets, or do you classify uh, it's a batting helmet? Yeah, I, well, that's when, different. When Michael said it, he said helmet. I was assuming it was a football, football helmet. helmet. I, okay. I will because take you said, football helmet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you want to go with four then for Peter? Okay. Yeah. So Peter will get four then. All right. Nicely five? done. Was it four. Five? I only counted four. I counted four. Oh. I got four as well too. Oh, rats! Must have missed one. It's all good. Still plenty of time. All right, Scott. Over to you. Ten seconds and go. Cricket bat, lacrosse stick, jock strap, boxing gloves, <laughs> mouthpiece. There you go. In no particular order. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Over to you, Mr. Wilt. You'll be naming five NHL teams. Naming five NHL teams. Ten seconds and begin. Penguins, Blues, Kings, Canucks, and Canadians. There you go. Yes. You got all five. Well done, sir. All right, Scott. Over to you. Ten seconds and begin. Panthers, Hurricanes, Islanders, Rangers, Blackhawks. That's five. There you go. You got it. Nicely done. Nicely done. Hard act to follow, Michael. All right, know. here we go. Oh, man. Ten seconds and begin. Um, predators, sharks, kings, wilds. Uh, I want to say Hartford Whalers. I don't know if they'll count, <laughs> <It does laughs> but not. You throw it out no. there. Um, all right, he got three technically because the kings repeated. So there we go. All right, going into the oh. third round, Scott, we'll start with you. 
naming five NFL AFC teams. Titans, Dolphins, Patriots, Jets, Chargers. There you go. He got five. Boom, bam, bam. Well done. Well done. All right, Michael, over to you. Ten seconds and go. Uh, Ravens, Raiders, um, Dolphins, uh, Colts, uh, Texans. There you go. Yes, you got all five again. Nicely done. All right, Peter. Ten seconds um, and Bron- go. Broncos, Colts, Jaguars, Titans, Steelers, um, Seahawks, nope. um, um, Raiders. There you go. So he got four, four. total. Four was out of Raiders all of that. Yeah, no, it was not. Okay. It was uh, Texans, I believe Titans. you said. Titans, Titans that was what it was. Okay. I, I promise we're listening. All right, as we go <laughs> into the final round, Game Master Shabby, what are the fi- are the, are the scores currently? Michael has 15 points, Peter has 16, and Scott's in the lead with 19. Ooh, Ooh. all right. So Michael will be leading us off. The way our final round works is you will have 10 seconds to name as many of, not just five. So it gives you an opportunity to... Pick up the pace, pull an upset, all that fun stuff. All right? Your topic in the final round is naming as many of sports movies. Okay. And you, you cannot list off, like, you know, you know, the one, two, three, four, five, six of us actual series. You name that series, you move on kind of thing. Got gotcha. it? Gotcha. Ten seconds. Begin. Legend of Beggar Vance, Rudy, um, Coach Carter, Gridiron Gang, uh, Remember the Titans, Gloria. He got five. He got five. All right. Not too bad. I mean, you're so used to doing the whole five. That's why then he's like, oh, I got to do more. All right. uh, Game Master Shibe, where are we looking at now after Michael is done? Michael has 20 points now. And let's see. Peter then needs four to tie that and one to go over. And Scott has 19, so he needs just one or two. Okay, Peter, 10 seconds for you, sir, to name as many sports movies as you can. And begin. Eight Men Out, uh, League of Their Own, 61. The Natural, um, Rudy 2. <laughs> <laughs> did they make a sequel? I don't think they did. He got four total. All right, so what is Scott uh, looking at then? Scott needs one to tie, and I will note that Peter and Michael are tied right now at 20. Okay, so we'll have to break that tie. So Scott needs one to tie and two to win. All right, Scott, 10 seconds and begin. The Sandlot, Major League, Sea Biscuit, We Are Marshall, Rocky, Fuel of Dreams, Bull Durham. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Drops the mic, walks out of the studio. There you go. We'll give it to him. Seven total is what he gets. So what is the final score this week, sir? So Scott's total then is 26 points. Okay, so Scott will be our overall winner, but we'll mm-hmm. come back to him. We'll come back. We're not going to clap for him yet because we got to break the tie with Michael and Ooh. Peter. Got to figure out who's going to second, who's going. Yeah, arm wrestling on the air. <laughs> we'll see who's going to This work. is great radio. <laughs> yes, this is fantastic. Just look, at the, look at the way they're just fighting each other. Now, so the, our tiebreaker on the show – uh, Game Master Shibe, who will go first in our tiebreaker, though? Flip your coin. Yes. It's Peter. All right, Peter. The Peter's side f- up the coin. Uh, Peter's face, eh, I think, is on that side. <laughs> the big Peter <laughs> smile. Yep, exactly. All right, so, Peter, you will be going first in our tiebreaker. You'll be naming as many as you can NFL teams. Okay? As many as you can in 10 seconds. And begin. Packers, Bears, Vikings, Buccaneers, Lions, Cowboys, Eagles, Steelers, Rams, Dolphins, um, Raiders. Um. Mm, he got 11. 12. 12 total? What did you think? Uh, you no, 11. 11. 11 total. Yep. So, Michael, you need to get at least 12. You cannot tie. Oh. Peter owns the tiebreaker. Pete, I think you, you've got this one. <laughs> so you got to get up at least 12. Um, All right. 10 seconds. And Fine. anything that he's um, said is not, it's not allowed. Oh, my God. So... <laughs> Godspeed. You didn't leave me any. <laughs> <laughs> they left you the eight. 19. Thing. Yeah, 19 <laughs> left. All right. 10 seconds and begin. Um, 49ers, Seahawks, Cardinals. Uh, you said Panthers, Buccaneers, um, Bengals. So three. Three overall. So, Game Master Shabby, what are the final scores for second and third place? Uh, Michael has 23 points, and Peter is in second then with 31. All right, and then Scott is our overall winner overall with how many winner points? With 26. Okay, there we go. Nicely done. Congratulations, Scott. 
Well, I thank you. You know what? It was an honor because this is our 40th show. Your 40th show. Yeah, absolutely. Irvin Johnson of the Bucks wore 40. Did he? Not to be confused with Magic Johnson, who was the MVP of the NBA's 40th All Star game. Look at this. <laughs> Just dropping knowledge. He's think, already won. I think the Marvin Webster and... also wore number 40, the human eraser. There you go. Oh. Has there been any notable soccer players that have worn 40, Peter? I, I can't really think Frank of Frank Klopas but... wore 41. Okay. Because 14 was already taken when he uh, joined oh. the team by Chris Armas, so he sure. flipped it. To 41, but huh. not that I know of as far as 40. Fair enough. Do you have any uh, fun plans for Halloween, Peter, since it is tomorrow? Oh, yeah. I'm going to um, answer the door and hand out those candy cigarettes. Oh, I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. So I'll make sure to have my uh, my child and my wife come join you. Uh, Michael, uh, thank you for being on the show again, sir. Always, always a pleasure. Any fun plans for the Halloween week? Well, you know, probably getting around some shenanigans, some, some trick or treats. Ooh. Are you a tricker or are you a treater? I'm a tricker. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I'll be a tricker. Have you any, any classic trickers at all that you'd like to share with the gang? Uh, not today. Any appropriate, <laughs> yeah. any appropriate for the radio, <laughs> for our families at home? Okay. Well, either way, though, we, we, we appreciate all of you being here. What's the Score has been a production of the Sports Podcasting Network. A very special thanks to our contestants and studio audience here at the Attention Era Media Studios. Our panelists this week have been Michael Biermeister, Peter Wilt, and Scott Wisniewski. Our social media producer is Tony Larson. Our social media staff is comprised of Emily Heffler and Christian Gill. Our theme was composed by Danny Hoffenstein. Our show producer was Caleb Pearson. And the executive director of What's the Score is Liz Colburn. I've been your game master, Josh Scheibe. And I've been your host, Baxter Colburn. Thanks so much for listening in. We'll see you next time on What's the Score. What's the Score?